Are you stressed out, working flat out? Then this is a program that will help you become fit to teach. Hi, I'm Irene Lindsay and I'm an NQT teaching at Sacred Heart School in Wimbledon. Uh, I've got year six. I've come to teaching late. I've had a family with four children, which I hoped would prepare me for some of the stresses that I've had to uh, encounter this year. What I'm looking for are some techniques to reduce the stress and um, to relax me a bit more easily. Hi, I'm Ross Higgins. I'm 28 years of age. I'm a year three teacher at Cena's first school, Harrow Wheelstone. It's my first year. It's been a very tough year with planning and marking and at the moment I find it quite hard to get a balance between my work life and my social life. To help these two, we've got just the experts. To help Irene unwind, meet our resident stress expert, Vanessa. And to help Ross find some harmony, meet our laid-back time management consultant, John. How's your lifestyle changed since you started teaching? Um, well, the job entails lots of planning, uh, lots of long hours, so which means that Really, your social kind of life has to be cut down. You know, on a Tuesday, like, I like to play, play five-side football. Some nights I shouldn't really be going because I leave school at half five, go straight to football. And then I know I'll be home by half nine, ten. And then I think, well, I've got to plan for this lesson. So I shouldn't really go football, but I do go. It's my way of kind of, you know, I need to ease the stress. I can see where the time management and the stress seems to be affecting you. Because even as you're talking about it, you're getting your heart's going up, your heart palpitations are right up here in your throat, you're really racing, you think, I've got to get this. And what I'm trying to do is look at your time management skills to alleviate your stress so you feel more relaxed through the day and maybe achieve more. Stammy, you're newly qualified. Mm -hmm. Yep. And how are you finding it? Um, well, uh, turmoil, I suppose. Mm. Very, very busy. During the day, mm. I, I'm working on adrenaline. Right. So I'm very fast paced, um, very lively, very bubbly, um, but the minute I walk in that front door it just all collapses. Right. It's like bursting a bubble and I am absolutely exhausted. And worse than that, I'm finding that when I go to bed I can't switch off. It's classic, classic right. mental stress. Okay. The good news is, is that you can get rid of all of this. Okay, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> and there's several yeah. ways that you yeah. can do that. So I'll be showing you Fantastic. a few physical things okay. and then giving you a few mental Love tricks. Them. Where people stress a lot, they become primary focused and then everything else goes out of focus. And at the same time everything goes out of focus, everything starts to fall down and the stress becomes more and more. So yeah, I've heard, that. I've, I've heard that. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Could you give me one example? Um, pretty much uh, my, my, um, my relationship with my girlfriend, yeah. What happens when you're stressed mm. is the first thing that you do when you're stressed is take an intake of breath. Mm -hmm. <gasps> and that gets stored in your body. Because if you find your breastplate, which is where the ribs meet, okay. and then take three or four finger lengths underneath and jab your thumb at that level and then start massaging. Does that hurt? Yes, it does actually. Yeah. Yeah, it does. That's exactly where you're storing your stress. Unfortunately, because the, the year was too stressful for both of us, so um, we just decided to, uh, to call it a day. What do I do? Do I focus fully on my teaching and let everything else fall? Or I'm trying to find that balance and that's, that's, what's, that's what's most difficult. Balance is what we're looking for. That's what I want. That's definitely <laughs> what I want. Yeah. Just try and breathe it into your hand. And exhale. And breathe. And you'll find mm. that that starts to relax. And that's your diaphragm. Yes. Now, the diaphragm is the most important indicator of your stress and well being. So this is where your day starts. Just looking around, what do you actually think stresses you? Um, just all my files, really, and this is the, the main file. Um, this is where all my planning, assessments, pretty much everything. So Boom. straight away, you wake up and it's in your face. Mm -hmm. Or you don't even have to get up, you just open your eyes and there's this big blue folder yeah, it's there. for all your time management. Where do you think you could move that to make a difference? Possibly downstairs. Um, but I think maybe waking up at an earlier time would probably help but when I set the alarm, I kind of snooze for 20 minutes. I mean, how, how do you feel, like, you've got Russ that comes down, he's rushing around, he's trying to do a lot of things here, he's trying to do some things there, he's got his bag in his hand, he can't have time for a hot drink. That Russ, or the Russ that's 
got 20 minutes, comes down, clicks the microwave, sits down, the folder's already on the table. Nice cup of tea. <coughs> Which one sounds? The latter, yeah, definitely the latter. That would sound good, um, but <coughs> that doesn't happen at all, really. So we're coming up to the school. Yeah. And how are you feeling? Well, generally the adrenaline's kicked yeah. in at this point, and I'm just taking things lesson at a time. What is going to be the stress today? What can I plan now, basically? Right. What you can do is really prepare yourself for the days. Mm. So one thing is, we were talking about the diaphragm lifting yes. at home, yeah? Okay. So that you're getting a full oxygen, lung yes. of oxygen rather. So you can interlock your fingers behind you and just take a nice deep breath, lifting up that diaphragm and exhale out. Inhale up and exhale out. That feels good. So when you open up your collarbone and your shoulders yes. like so, you're actually allowing your body to wake up, to get some energy yes. into it. Mm. Yeah? Yes, it does. And it also gives you an enormous amount of confidence mm. in that when you actually turn... Yeah, so if you're taking up more of the space, really. Yes. Yes. yes, it's yours. Right. Big world, you're only asking for this amount of space. And it, it shows. Yeah. So this is your route to work? Yeah, in the morning. Out the door by 7.15, 7.30. This is what I'm usually doing. A bit more quicker pace, huh? <laughs> a bit quicker pace. Backpack on, ready to go. So how do you think you could use this time on the way to work? Um, I usually get a coffee and I get the newspaper. Um, and I give myself the amount of time on the train and the bus to read it until I get to school. And how long is that normally? It's about 45, 50 minutes. Could you fit in like half an hour? Just like some summarising, no in-depth stuff? Yeah, so, I mean, sometimes I have known to do it in the past, but I'm just so tired in the morning. Um, just kind of, I'm thinking about the lessons, but I, I kind of, it's almost like a psychological thing. I don't want to take up my lesson plans. <laughs> right. I don't want my lesson start, my day starting at least till half eight or eight o'clock. Now, if you've got a rowdy class, and if, say, you've got someone on this side of the room that's giving you mm. hassle, mm -hmm. what you can do after you've done your power inhalation is just start looking from the opposite side and take your inhalation here and then exhale and pan across. Because by the time you look at the person who's actually hassling you, right. you'll feel much more relaxed. Yes. Do you want okay, to... So. You can just scan above their yes. heads, yes. so you're not catching their eyes. Yes. What you don't want to do is necessarily eyeball to eyeball them, right. because they, they can sometimes be more confident in their naughtiness than, yes. than you are. Yes. So you can just stare here at the oh, just yeah. above, and it makes them look up at Absolutely, you. Absolutely, Because yes. they're trying to get your That's eyes to come technique. down. Oh, so, right. so it's also a very nice way mm. of just reclaiming power okay. again. I've never Hands thought about the body language before. Yeah. I've thought about what's going, the words, but not the body language, and that makes a big difference. Right, so we're talking about your things to do, and we found a little bit of space for you to do some work on the train and stuff. Yeah. So I've got nine, ten balls here, and they all represent different things you've got to do, objectives for the week. Right. And I'd like you to sort them out into what's urgent and what's not so urgent. So could you think of two things that are really urgent? Two things that would be most urgent at the moment are uh, setting in place my behaviour management strategies. Um, for example, a reward system getting up, I'm getting a new one going in the classroom. So that would be definitely the first thing I would try and do. Brilliant. Second thing I'd try and do would be my target setting cards for the children. Well, the second thing I'd love to focus on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what are some of the things that are not so important? First thing would be all the junk mail that I received through school. Um, I would say I'd probably spend about an hour sifting through some of this stuff, and to be honest, 98% of that is usually rubbish, so I'd get rid of that. Um, second thing I could get rid of would be my emailing. I need to cut down on my emailing. Probably 6% of it would be emailing my friends, sometimes sifting through mail, internal mail in the school. So I'd like to get rid of that. Well. Brilliant. One thing that's extremely good to balance the mind yeah. is just literally balancing on one foot. Try and lift it up as high as it will go. So what you'll find is that you have to actually start unwinding to do this. Yes. Yes. Because if you're going to be thinking about other things, you'll be wobbling. So we've talked about the two urgent and important things, mm. and the two things that you don't really need. Yeah. So we're left with your work-related tasks, which are probably my planning, uh, my marking, 
and putting my, and my PE assessments. So I wonder if this week, after you've done each task, if you could write down how long it actually takes you. Okay. And then in the following weeks, we could actually cut down the time it takes you to become more efficient. Okay, yeah, yeah, I could do that. Tuck your tailbone under, squeeze your belly, and just imagine your spine being completely straight. And as you inhale up, try and reach further so that you're really reaching to be your tallest, tallest self. And just breathe. Mm. Exhale as you go left. Help keep your knees straight. Beautiful. It does. I mean, you feel much more space here, yeah. don't you? So you'll yes. be opening up the sides mm. yes. of the ribs. Brilliant. So tell me about your sleeping patterns. How mm. do you sleep? I've had lots of problems with sleep, really. Yeah. Um, I just find that either I can't switch off at night and I go to bed and I'm exhausted and then the brain kicks in mm -hmm. and it won't let go and I just rewind and rewind the same next lesson geography or something. Are you thinking the same thought? Very often, yes. It's the same thing going over and over and over and over. It's always the same lesson or the right. same issue anyway. Right. It's usually a bit like the scenario of you've forgotten your passport and you're going on oh, holiday, right. but in the classroom. Right. So, you know, okay. you've turned up to teach them and you've forgotten the resource and right. um, um, the child trips over or, you know, something yes. goes wrong. OK. So one thing that you could try and do is to imagine this and allow the movie to play through and then start making it go further away in the distance. Right, Remember to okay. breathe because what happens the brain will grasp on to the easiest thought yeah. that it can think yes. and that is obviously a repetitive yes. one. That's yes. going to be a stressful one for you because right. that's the perversity of our mind. Yes. So if you can actually give it some new food to think something else to, to actually I have a different perspective. So breathe deeply. And yeah. And exhale, remembering that the belly is going to go first and then the chest okay. and the shoulders. All right. So you're taking this very calm Yes, I've never tried breath. that before. So we've looked at your week and a uh, natural day for you when you're going to work. And so you're just going to try and get up a little bit earlier. Yep. Do some work on the train. Prioritise your goals. Guesstimate your time spent. And find out what's important what's not so important so that you can be 90% in control of your time and 10% allowed for little yeah. ups and downs. I'll give it a go John, I'll take all that, all that good advice and I'll see if I can uh, put that into my teaching and hopefully it will benefit. Good luck. Thank you. Hope right, all goes well. Cheers. Inhale, drawing it right up to your shoulders. And exhale, belly, chest and shoulders. Huh? Well, that's some pretty good advice, but how have our two NQTs found it after two weeks? I'm finding that the breathing is really helping. If I have a stressful time in the classroom or even outside, I take a deep breath and it really does help. I've even managed to have a couple of good night's sleep, which is a real bonus. John really opened my eyes to what I was doing wrong. I was getting too stressed about my work and I wasn't getting on with it in an efficient way. As far as the uh, long-term planning, it's early days, but just writing down how long things are taking has meant that I can plan ahead and uh, do tasks when I want to do them. I feel I'm getting a better work-life balance. Um, I'm getting more time to socialise and who knows, maybe in the future I might find some time to find myself a new girlfriend.